Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I hope to go supersonic once again, taking on this X-Plane Research supersonic contract. And we're going to be going about Mach 1.5 with a jet, no rocket engines allowed. And we have to hold a very steady rate of climb for 5 minutes. And then we have to land on the runway with a descent angle lowered in 10 degrees. Gosh darn it. <laughs> I always go much deeper than that. No, I anyway. But then again, it says uh, land or splash down anywhere here. So this is optional. It just gets you extra stars. So we will see. But uh, yeah, we now have the X-Plane cockpit, X-1 cockpit. And the X-1 cockpit seems to be 45 kilograms, which seems rather light, <laughs> I think. But it's got the configurable crew science, which will allow us to uh, hopefully unlock the solar panels. If we get 2.5 science, we can unlock the solar panels. So let's see about our science first of all, before I forget. And uh, we'll go with supersonic flight, okay. Um, it's, it says 0.33, so maybe that's all we get. And we have to... The duration is 24 minutes, so I don't know. I, I don't remember how this all works out as far as how much science it's actually going to get me. But we'll find out. Okay, so that is going to be our main science, and we need to build a jet. And we have one Kerbal. Yes, proficiency of general aviation. Well, um, let's just make sure. Uh, proficiency X1. Start training. It's got to take 45 days, it said, I think, there. And we'll wait until we build it before giving uh, Robert Richard uh, training for the mission. So what I'm thinking here is even though this particular contract is only going to have us do a jet, I'm going to make sure to build the plane so that we can do the rocket stuff as well. And so I've got a rocket tank in the middle and then we're going to have the kerosene tanks for the jets uh, balanced around it. And we're going to use the J57 because, well, it's just the right thing to do. Uh, it is, of course, a very famous engine. and it actually sticks right through the entire body right now, um, which is fine. We'll underutilize most of the tanks probably, uh, so they'll be like toroidal tanks, effectively speaking. Maybe I should do that, uh, though I'm afraid of what's going to happen as far as tooling is concerned, but we could, right? We could have the hollow uh, tank, hollow cone, hollow cylinder, right? And then pass it through. I mean, just for you know realism's sake, I suppose. Or we could not do that. I don't know how the tooling is going to handle that. Let's see. And actually, probably we want a high-pressure tank for the rocket tank. Well, there are certain lengths where it's already tooled, like this one. So that means that even though I'm using a hollow cylinder, it's already counting. It doesn't count it as something different. As long as it's conventional structure, which it is, and an aluminum stringer tank, and of the right dimension, it will already be considered tooled. Well, I mean, who am I to argue? Uh, so there was another length that, this uh, just aluminum stringer tank, that's the high pressure one. Uh, so, we have 1.2 meter diameter, not 1.25 for this one. And a 1.2, well, this length will be fine. This is tooled already. It looks like as long as it's a little bit less than 1.25 meters, it'll be fine. Okay, well, alright. That's already tooled. This one we can shade about the same. And then we'll have these hollow tanks, which will at least make the body longer. I didn't think this jet was that long, but okay, I'm sure they did research on that. Seven minutes. Hmm. Well, that's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of burn time, so we probably want 1.2 meters and 1.2 meters. 
That's an uh, enormous thrust to weight ratio though. I like that. Once we carry the rocket fuel, it won't be so feisty though. This one is double what it was supposed to be. We just should use two tanks. I mean, that's not bad. Now, let's see about our prospective rocket engines though. We won't mount them, but we'll have a dummy mass to simulate them, because otherwise the balance would change, right? They're pretty heavy and they're going to be in the tail. So, I mean, the XLR-11 has a lot of benefits. It has an incredible burn time, infinite ignitions, unlimited ignitions. This one is much more powerful and expensive. Um, not really more efficient, though. Actually, the XLR-11 is more efficient, but this is main, basically a single chamber. Of course, we could just use our favorite little Arabies. I'm tempted just to have like a whole bunch of Arabies, but a lot, uh, they'll probably fail. They'll be very likely to fail. These start out with 93.2% reliability right off the bat. The Arabies currently, I think we have all the data, have, well I mean I actually have the AJ-1027, so actually they're more reliable than that. So maybe I should just stick to the Arabies. But if we need a lot of them that's a problem. I mean max data 99.8% so I wonder what level of XLR-11 we can get right now. Uh, well, it seems like we can get this one even. 220 seconds. This one says rate of burn time 300 slash 3600 seconds. This one has one ignition and a burn time of 220 seconds because it was a missile one. Huh. Pump fed version might not need the HP tank. It has an unfortunate mount, though. As if we didn't have enough problems with uh, engines taking up space. Yeah, I don't think it needs a high pressure tank. It's a mitt with them, but that's not quite enough thrust. They're getting less thrust than the jet engine. Yep, I mean... It's hard to beat the Arabies. I mean, the Arabies we can mount so conveniently. And just like that, with four Arabies we've got 1.28 thrust to weight ratio, just with the rocket engines, for 82 seconds right there. And then depending on our application we can sort of undersupply the kerosene for the jet engine if we don't need so much time. Now, how balanced is this? Pretty close. Okay, so I'll design it based on this, and then we'll... Uh, I mean, the Airbees aren't that heavy. They're 8 kilograms each. So... And that's also a huge benefit over the XLR-11, which is 150 kilograms. That's 150 kilograms. I mean, I don't know about the AJ-1027 mass. Let's see. Uh, 12 kilograms. So it's 12 kilograms and gets almost uh, the same thrust and has uh, better ISP. The only problem is that uh, it only has one ignition. That's a bit of a downside. But, you know, we really only need one. Center mass is right smack in the middle. I think I might go with a delta this time. I mean, of course I'm not going to just make an X1. We could contain the kerosene in the wing, but I wanted to make the body a little bit longer anyway, so. Okay, so this is what I have. We've got the delta wing, all the control surfaces are properly configured, and you can see the cross-sectional area curve. We've got a little bump where the landing gear is, but I'll take that for now. And yeah, this is with the rocket engines fitted. And I just want to see what happens. Let me just save this. I've called it the XL, and we'll just call it the XL. Uh, so that's convenient. And we're going to take those off. It hardly changes the center of mass, so I don't think I'll put a simulated mass in the back. 
Um, we'll just uh, go like that. And we'll put them back on when we need them. And we don't need the fuel in the tanks here. But we do need an air intake. <laughs> I miss having the air intake on the nose. Uh, we could virtually put it anywhere. Yeah, let's go for the radial intakes. How much intake area do you need? 0 0.339. 0 0.45. So we should be good. Well, it only costs one to unlock it. Oh, they're huge. Please let me... We can't tweak scale them? Oh, no. Well, we're going to have to... There's an X plane that has it on the top. We're going to have to do that. Even though the front of the engine is all the way up here. Well, okay. A little bump, but we were dealing with that anyway. So, that's our XL, hopefully. XL... Here. Well, we'll just save it like this and add the rocket engines later. So, we have no fuel in those tanks. But uh, to upgrade the pad, we should, or the runway, I guess, we should have the fuel first and then tell it to upgrade based on that. I don't even know if we want to do the rocket part of it. It depends on how fast it goes without that. Um, the jet engine is a little bit more burdened now. Than it used to be. We could make the wings a little bit weaker, but no, 0.7 is okay. It's a little bit of a mismatch in the thickness there, but I'm not gonna correct that now. Well, renovate costs only 40. Uh, incompatible with the Boom Boom Bonanza 2. We kind of have to. Why do we have to scrap it? Can't we just like put it there? Why can't we just store it in the hangar? It's a hangar. I don't want to scrap the Boom Boom Bonanza 2 just because we're making this vessel. Okay, now renovate, please. Okay, now we can build this. Let me take a look at the terms of our contract here. Seems okay if this flies properly. Okay, where's our Kerbal? Mission X1. Oh, uh, Robert Richard isn't even complete with the proficiency, so let's, yeah, let's just warp to complete there. Okay. Now, training mission X1. Alright. Oh, shoots. Hmm. We can't EVA. I think this cockpit doesn't allow for EVA. I assume that means that they can't. Um, should I add a parachute? I think so. Hold on. Uh, is, will he have to retrain if I edit it? Oh, and did we get air brakes? We have not gotten air brakes yet, so that's not an option. Um... Well, it says edited 0%. I put the parachutes on and now it's a completely new thing. Hold on. Wow. Parachutes are like... Um... That doesn't seem good. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, so adding parachutes means we have to build it from scratch? Well, I guess we're not going to add parachutes. Okay, so here we are with Robert Richard. Feels like I should be saying Robert Richard III or something. But uh, anyway, Robert Richard. Oh, this, uh, this, this cockpit doesn't have food and water in. That's helpful, I suppose. Okay, atmospheric autopilot on. My throttle works, good. All right, well, we don't need a whole lot of throttle with this. Let's just be careful here. Um, oh, oh, please stick off. Okay, I'm gonna abort this. 
Oh, no. Ooh. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Ooh. So, it didn't want to take off in the amount of time that I, that I was expecting it would. We'll review that later, but okay, let's just um, recover vessel. I don't know, I think we'll just do a normal recovery and get the parachutes on, right? Let's see... Angle attack 12 at Mach 0.35. Hmm. Well, let's uh, maybe bring that down a little bit. Make it larger so that we have some angle to begin with. Seems a little bit nose heavy, so I'm moving the wing up. But our pitch controls are getting a little bit close to the center of mass, so that's not ideal. The uh, position of the landing gear, I wanted to put it where it was because it was smoother on the cross-sectional area curve. But we might want to have it closer so that rotation is a little bit better. Okay, and we'll take the opportunity to put the parachutes. I feel like I should increase the wing a bit. Not that much. Okay, I've put in the simulated masses for the rocket engines this time. So these containers are each 8 kilograms. And, well, we've got more wingage. And hopefully the control surfaces are a little bit further back to provide more pitch control. But we will see. We've got the parachutes, but the last time swooped me out, so we will find out. Okay. 1980. We better check on our programs, though. Well, this one, early satellites deadline is 1983. The explained research I went slow with, so it's uh, 1992. But we should get done a little bit quicker than that. Okay, astronaut. It's got proficiency. Let's train for the mission. So this time I'll also expect a much higher takeoff speed than I was thinking of. And let me make sure we just go ahead and run all the experiments. Well, those two are not going to be useful. Invalid situation for now on that one. Okay. Right, put a little dihedral in. I don't know if that helps anything. And we don't want the parachute ignite, uh, deploying at the same time as the jet. Okay. It's a hefty wing. But I would le like to leave the ground properly this time. Something exploded. I think it was the bottom tank. Uh oh, our wheels overstressed apparently. I didn't catch what speed that was. We can't retract them. I don't know if we can get past the sound barrier like that, but we'll try. Um, we will have to use the parachutes, though. Well, we'll have to watch out for scraping the tail when we try to take off with the actual Airby or AJ-1027 engine on. Our descent angle will not be lower than 10 degrees. <laughs> uh, assume we're not going to have any breathing problems for a bit. Okay, we are past Mach 1. 
I don't know how much effect the landing gear being out is causing on here, but we're just sort of creeping up to the speed we need right now. It's going to be a long flight back. <laughs> I'm not turning right now, so it's going to be a long flight back. By the time we get to 450 meters per second, it's going to take 5 minutes just to get to 475 if we can. So, shouldn't be any problem staying between those speeds for a while. Okay, it's counting. Uh, every time I try and do anything with the stick, it's sort of iffy, but I want to level out, level out. Uh, yeah. That's a little bit better. It is running the supersonic flight, so this speed is fine. Okay, three, two, one. Alright, so now we just need to come down. I'm not gonna try maneuver at Mach 1, past Mach 1 right now. Well, okay, I will. <laughs> but I, I don't want to be pushing it. But I don't know if we're going to get all the way back to our home with the fuel that we have remaining. I don't know where we are. We are here. Just trying to get some more of that supersonic flight data. Oh, I guess it's 450 in particular, not Mach 1.5. Okay, I won't completely exhaust our fuel. I don't know if we can, actually. So, we're gonna glide down a bit. Yeah, uh, what is the... I guess there's no residuals on the jet engines, which is interesting. I just noticed the top engine is a little bit offset. We'll have to fix that. Uh, not engine mass substitute for the engine okay 1.9 bits of info we wanted 2.5 but this doesn't have any more juice okay well we'll see how much drag we have when the engines really really quit about to run out of kerosene but I think I can aim to deploy the parachute over the space center uh, it doesn't have much drag at all, really. Really, really want to be on a runway, but we'll see. Okay, deployment. Ah, uh, maybe the end of the runway. Uh, I decided to go over here. Oh well. I mean, I don't know. Uh, maybe the landing gear would still have worked. I don't know if looking busted means that it really is busted or not. But I assumed it was really busted, so... Okay, it I think it's completed, even though obviously the descent angle is not lower than 10 degrees. That's just a bonus. So anyway, recover vessel. I guess we'll just replace the landing gear. But who knows, that might require us to rebuild it from scratch, like the parachutes did. We've got another one being built too. Okay, science recover 1.9 credits. We still need 0.6 for the technology that we're looking for. But let's take a look at the contracts. Mach 2 supersonic. Now this time, no rocket engines still on that one. Uh, this one's uh, experimental rocket plane. No jet engine allowed. I don't know. I, I just want to go fast regardless. Is that a problem? No rocket engines. Why? Why? Why this exclusivity? No jet engines allowed. Why? Hmm. 
That's a required one, too. Well, I'm gonna try this, but this is dangerous. Well, I'll take a look and see if we can manage this, I don't know. So, I'm gonna replace the jet with the best rocket engine we've got. Which is actually the RV, but um, <laughs> let's see. How heavy was the jet engine and where's its center of mass anyway? Two tons it was. Well, that's a bit of a relief, I suppose. But the jet engine's center mass was right at its center, so that was convenient. So we won't have as heavy a mass to deal with, but it will pull the center mass back. It's a bit weird looking. Well, we'll call this XLR. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> well... Got an XLR25, and I'll save it, and, but we won't edit this. Okay, well, I just want to add extra fuel. I don't want to take away the kerosene. Well, I didn't complain about it, so hopefully our other XLs will not be... Will not be facing any problems as far as the fuel is concerned. I don't know if we can get to the speed and altitude we need in two minutes. Uh, we'll have a thrust weight ratio of one, uh, so that's always nice. Of course, they were thinking of air launching, but I don't like air launching. So these are probably going to break like that, though. Maybe I should increase the size. I guess the removal of the air intake has changed stuff. Well, this is risky. At least we have the parachutes, but we just scraped stuff on the tail last time. Okay, training time. Well, we don't want a whole lot of throttle initially. Atmospheric autopilot on. And... Let's see. Uh oh, the gear broke again. I can't pull up. Okay, well, uh, 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 this one was a push too far. I I don't know whether it is the location of the landing gear or the fact that it broke or but we definitely could not rotate. Oh, uh, our esteemed only Kerbal. Because of the irrational nature of this contract, which required only rocket engines for some reason, met his demise. Like, you know, the F-104 that had the little rocket engine in the tail totally never happened, right? Astronaut killed during space mission. It wasn't a space mission. It was, you need to list all the test pilots who died at Edwards Air Force Base, not those guys. Completely different thing. All right. Well, I think I'll leave it there with that disappointment. We're going to have to find another Kerbal. Um, we still need the science. We'll probably just do an XL mission to get some more science at the start of the next episode. And then we'll proceed with... Uh, doing the solar power satellite mission because then we'll be unlocking the solar power well the solar panels and then we can do that hopefully all right well with that thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time